east of the city, the mountains of Jerusalem plummet dramatically, 3,600 feet to the lowest point on Earth, the Dead Sea. In the intense heat of Israel's barren Judean desert, David fled from King Saul, seeking refuge in the mountain caves. John the Baptist lived on locusts and wild honey, and here Jesus rejected the temptations of the devil. For thousands of years, the Judean desert held secrets buried in its sands. In 1947, a young Bedouin shepherd threw a stone into a cave and was startled by the sound of breaking pots. This sound echoed around the world. He had stumbled on the greatest archaeological find of the century, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Unaware of their value, the Bedouin sold the scrolls to an antique dealer in Bethlehem. On November 23rd, Elazar Sukenik, professor of archaeology at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, received an urgent phone call from a friend, an Armenian antique dealer from Jerusalem's old city. It was urgent. He had something of possible interest, and he insisted that they meet. The next morning, Sukenik and his friend traveled to Bethlehem, and there purchased three of the scrolls that the Bedouin shepherd had sold to the antique dealer. During the following months, Sukenik and a small team at the Hebrew University began the delicate task of unrolling scrolls molded together by 20 centuries of decomposition. Sukenik was amazed to find both a Hebrew manuscript of the prophet Isaiah, 1,000 years older than any existing original biblical text, and a strange document that told of a 40-year apocalyptic war in which the sons of light defeated the sons of darkness. Marveling at what he read, Sukenik's thoughts turned to the mysterious Jewish sect mentioned by writers of antiquity, the Essenes. News of the discovery intoxicated scholars, and Bedouins and archaeologists raced to search the area. They were not to be disappointed. In Cave 4 alone, they found 15,000 fragments belonging to about 500 scrolls. The Rockefeller Museum building in Jerusalem became home to the numerous fragments of disintegrating parchment collected from 11 caves. Father Roland de Vaux, an archaeologist and the director of the École Biblique in Jerusalem, formed an international team of scholars to work on the scrolls. The team identified all the books of the Old Testament, apocryphal writings, and texts attributed to a Jewish sect. Half a mile below the cave of the scrolls, and overlooking the Dead Sea, lies the ancient settlement of Khirbet Qumran. History's only reference to it lies in a few lines of Pliny the Elder, a first century Roman geographer. On the western shore of the Dead Sea are settled the Essenes, a solitary people, extraordinary beyond all others, who live without women and without money, having only the palm trees for company. Excavations at the ruins of Qumran found jars like those that held the scrolls amongst the remains of a large settlement active from mid-2nd century BCE to the year 68 CE, when Qumran was destroyed by the Romans. Over 30 buildings, some originally two stories high, were uncovered. From the collapsed ruins of an upper room, a 15-foot-long mud, brick, and plaster table was reconstructed. When inkwells were discovered nearby, Father DeVoe confidently labeled the room, the scriptorium, a room where scrolls were written and copied. The scribe's art has changed little down to our own day. Scrolls are still written by hand on the same kind of treated leather hides. The scrolls never refer to the sect as the Essenes, but simply as the community of the New Covenant, the elect of Israel, or the followers of the Teacher of Righteousness, and describe the spiritual nature of their life. As for who could join, the scroll of the community rule declares, He shall admit into the covenant of grace all those who have freely devoted themselves to the observance of God's precepts, that they may be joined to the counsel of God. The members of the community were dependent on fresh water for their rituals. But in Israel's desert, rain is rare except for once or twice a year in the winter, when flash floods come cascading down the Judean mountains to plunge into the Dead Sea 4,000 feet below. 
At these times, the community trapped the flow in a natural basin, and then carried it 2,100 feet by aqueduct into their settlement. A complex series of channels then fed water to all areas of the compound, including pools and ritual baths. As the scroll of the community rule reads, And when his flesh is sprinkled with purifying water and sanctified by cleansing water, it shall be made clean by the humble submission of his soul to all the precepts of God. Besides baptism, there were other similarities between the Christians and the Essenes. Like the community in Qumran, the early Christians also sought the seclusion of the desert searching for a monastic life of contemplative solitude. The similarities between the Qumran sect and early Christian communities sparked the imaginations of scholars around the world. Might John the Baptist have been an Essene? Could Jesus himself have been a member of the sect? And perhaps here, by the rugged shores of the Dead Sea, were to be found the very origins of Christianity. But is this picture too simple? The military nature of the settlement with its fortified watchtower does not fit the image of peaceful monks. Some scholars now believe that Qumran was in fact a stronghold of Jewish zealots who rebelled against Roman occupation. As evidence, some point to the sectarian scrolls found in the nearby Masada fortress. The deciphering of thousands of scroll fragments is near completion, yet the mysteries still remain. Who really lived in Qumran, and why did they retreat to the harsh desert wilderness? Did they write the manuscripts in their desert settlement? Or were the scrolls part of Jerusalem's temple library, secreted away and hidden from the advancing Roman legions? Were the members of Qumran peace-loving scribes in a monastic retreat, or a militant order active in the resistance? Whatever the outcome of the academic debates, and beyond the excitement of new discoveries, it is clear the words of this ancient community have already given our world much to contemplate. The scroll of the community rule, chapter 4, reads, Until now the spirits of truth and falsehood struggle in the hearts of men, and they walk in both wisdom and folly. For God has established the two spirits in equal measure until the renewal, when there shall be no more lies, and all the works of falsehood shall be put to shame.